Probably from my perspective, uh, the most interesting or unique aspect is we've actually created a climate observatory for observing the way in which climate operates. We were used to the idea of satellite measurements of looking at the world from the top down in a continuous operational manner. We had never tried to do the same thing from the bottom up. And there are obviously things you can do from the bottom up that you can't do from the top down. We can use a lot more power and we can use a lot more instruments because we're not constrained by having to mount them on a satellite platform. Only occasionally have we conducted field programs before where there are intensive measurements designed to address particular issues. Up until the ARM program, those field uh, experiments really only lasted for a few weeks. They're very expensive, uh, they're logistically difficult. And the uniqueness of the ARM program is that we're doing that intensive field observation program day after day, week after week, we hope for at least 10 years. ARM has been the cause of a lot of development of new kinds of instrumentation and techniques for using instruments on the ground. The combination of traditional instrumentation that's been used for decades and instrumentation that is absolutely brand new, a state of the science. Remote sensors that put out continuous data streams. That means continuous measurements of the wind speed, wind direction, temperature, so forth as a function of height. Improving those techniques and developing techniques where none existed before so that we could measure things in the atmosphere that previously we had no capability of measuring unless we flew a plane right through the cloud. Uh, much newer methods of measuring uh, atmospheric water vapor from instruments that remain on the ground. Uh, these include microwave radiometers and Raman lidars. And one particular achievement of the ARM program so far has been to operate a, the Raman lidar really for the first time in a near continuous mode. But still in science we need what we call intensive operation periods. We need to get in there with a few more instruments that we don't have. We need to get in there with some uh, accelerated time schedules that we can't afford to do all the time to launch the balloons at a, at a, at a greater frequency. And we call those intensive operation periods and they, they happen several times a year. An example of an intensive operation period is one that's ongoing now where NASA is participating with armed scientists. Um, they're looking at radiation transfer um, basically how much sunlight passes through and out of the Earth's atmosphere. Another experiment that's going on at the same time is we have the uh, G1 aircraft that's looking at aerosols in the atmosphere and how that affects sunlight as it passes through the Earth's atmosphere. But they're also flying radiometers and the information between the aerosol measurements they make and how it affects the radiative transfer and the radiation measurements they also make on that aircraft are a nice complementary set to the uh, research through NASA. Group participation really makes the data sets for both more full and rich. The use of unmanned aerospace vehicles or UAVs as they're called is another unique aspect of the ARM program. These airplanes which are flown remotely from pilots who sit in a trailer on the ground were developed for military purposes during the Cold War and with the end of the Cold War they've become available for use scientifically. And they have the capability of staying in the air for a long time. And there's no other way that we can make measurements at an altitude of say 22,000 feet uh, continuously. ARM brings together an impressive team of scientists from a wide range of backgrounds. And the degree of cooperation represents something of a new attitude among researchers. In the past, many of the problems that we studied were fairly local or at most regional problems. As a result, they did not involve many agencies or many scientists. And as a result, you had pretty much a stovepiped approach. Historically, there's been a uh, disconnect between the people who build models of climate and the people who collect the data. The paradigm shift that the Global Change Program has inserted into our new way of thinking 
has prompted this interagency collab collaboration and cooperation, which we now see at unprecedented levels. That works two ways. One is we've been able to take advantage of technology and people and other agencies. We have had cooperative programs with NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. We have ongoing collaboration with NASA. We have ongoing collaboration with the National Science Foundation. The university community at the same time uh, brings the strength of looking at the detailed physics as well as the interpretation of the data uh, to uh, developing the parameterization schemes and they've been able to take advantage of our facilities in order to advance their programs as well. Having established the ARM um, uh, observing site in the Southern Great Plains, what has tended to happen is that other federal agencies have come to that site. To bring and test their own equipment, uh, to run aircraft observations uh, around it. Uh, in a sense, what we've created is a field of dreams. We've built it and others have come to take advantage of that unique facility. The fact that the investment to establish a user facility is, is already here. We have the, the electrical connections, we have the computer connections, we have the power, we have the water, we have the infrastructure. Then anybody that wants to run experiments, it's easy. Just plug in their instruments. They don't have to reinvent a location like this every time to come in and do research. The Southern Great Plains site represents the largest group of remote sensing atmospheric instruments in the world. and the largest radiometer calibration facility in the world. And the ARM team has distinguished itself as the world leader in the ability to measure quantities of atmospheric water vapor.